Hi everyone and welcome to uh, this afternoon, or it's afternoon here in the UK for us, uh, webinar. And I can see from the list of uh, attendees, some of you were with us this morning, so it's lovely to have you join us uh, once again. And I also see there are some of our quantum users and I can also see some, um, some of you who have very kindly emailed me because you have bought uh, some of my books on Amazon on volume price analysis. So wherever you are in the world, however, whatever your connection to, to us is, welcome. And of course, I see some new names that I don't actually recognize. So if it's your first time with us, welcome to you too as well. But before we start, as usual, may I draw your attention to the disclaimer that you can see on your screen. As you know, this uh, business can be extremely risky. So please, please, don't ever think of using money that you cannot afford to lose. Right, what are we going to do in today's webinar? Well, this session is uh, predominantly devoted to uh, the indices. We've got, I think, commodities. David is, I think, got gold up. And we do have a little look at uh, the Forex, sometimes just to carry on um, from this morning, particularly if there's been some interesting price action from a VPA perspective or uh, you know how we use the, the quantum indicators that David and I have developed. And if you're with us this morning, this is my workspace of, from my MT5 platform for the pound Aussie pair, which I just want to just very quickly whiz through because it's um it's a profile. If you use MT5, the great thing about MT5. Apologies about that. David just suddenly dashed off. I think one of the dogs started kicking off. We've got someone at, at the front door. Anyway, as I was saying, I've got MT5 and there are a number of reasons why I like this platform. One of them is you do have a lot of uh, time frames to choose from. You don't have the seconds charts, but you certainly have a, a whole raft of minute charts, uh, hourly charts, and then you've got the day, the weekly and the monthly. David has got uh, his ninja trader up and i think he's also got uh the trend station up as well well certainly with some of the indicators as you know we're developing for trade station and um we're not quite at the point where we'll be able to uh, release the indicators but it's been um been an interesting exercise for a number of reasons, one of them uh, is which we've, um, because of the platform and the and the sophistication of the platform, we've actually been able to tweak some of our indicators and I think create new ones as well, or derivatives of the ones that we've got. Anyway, all sorts of exciting stuff that's going on. The narrative for the um, these webinars that we've kind of introducing over the last two two sessions, David, is we're we're kind of looking at um, what as a trader do you need to recognize in a chart, what is the sort of um, setups that you are looking for uh, in order to take a trade? And there are, you know, I'm not saying there are thousands of setups, but there's any combination of setup that you may want to use before you take a trade. But before you do that, one of the things you really, really do have to understand is what is the chart actually telling you? In other words, <clears throat> what is the what we call the C state? of that chart. Is it in a trend? Is it in a congestion phase? Is it at a point of reversal? Because if you don't understand that very fundamental, those very fundamental principles of the chart, forget about even multiple, you know, before even moving to multiple time frames, you know, you you know you'll come across the internet on the internet and books you know use this use this tactic, use this strategy, you'll always, you know, you'll always be successful. Well that's not true because if that were true, robots, quants, they would be wiping the floor in this market. Um, you know, automated strategies uh, that, that uh, you know, auto automated strategies you know, that you know that trades are triggered on a chart when a predefined set of conditions are met. They work some of the time, but there are so many variables um, on a, in the markets that what when they develop a, um, a an EA, an expert advisor, a robot, call it what you what you will. It is usually developed for a particular set of circumstances and a particular market condition. Now that market condition may occur, but the but it's it won't be the same all the time. So as I said, 
understanding the C state, what is the chart actually telling you at any given time, and then seeing how that stacks up in multiple time frames. And um, what we saw this morning in the pound Aussie, it doesn't matter that it's the pound Aussie, this could be any other instrument. And the best way I can um, uh, dis describe this to you and help you understand is to actually show you uh, on, a, on a practical basis. So this is my uh, profile. This is the Renko chart that I have. This is my non-time-based chart because I am focusing on the faster time frames. I like to use a chart where all I'm looking at is price action. And I look at that in combination with the time charts that I have. So this is my Renko chart. This is actually set to three pips. But what the Renko, Renko has a number of advantages, but it also has one key advantage in that you can see clearly by what I mean about the condition of this particular chart. If you move over, move over to this side of the chart here, this was the, this was this morning, this was the beginning of the trend in this particular pair. This is what we call a primary trend, and it was really practically unbroken. On the time charts, the beginning, the, the this trend initiated on the three minute chart as a breakaway from what we call the volume point of control. It's that part of the chart, which is the fulcrum of the chart. It's where you have its support and resistance uh, through the prism of volume. Given that charts spend, markets spend an awful lot of time in congestion, it's really important to recognize which of those congestion uh, phases on a chart are the key, if you like, to uh, a, a move happening or not. So this was where it happened. This is what we call a secondary trend, a pullback. We know it's a secondary because obviously the, the price action rolled over. We've also got our pivots here. We had a change in trend, but we didn't have a change in the trend monitor. It only went to this intermediate cover before the uh, primary trend was reinstated. We've actually had this twice. We had another secondary trend and then we had the final we had the reversal. And I actually said this morning that the look out for the reversal when the US session uh, came on board. And in fact, that's pretty much what we've had. We then had a very nice reversal lower, a bit of a secondary trend there. Then we're going back up again. This is congestion. You can see that beautifully played out on a Renko chart. The Renko chart then helps with entries, exits, support and resistance, all the other things that make up volume price, volume price analysis. And the indicators we've developed are there to support this uh, our principal methodology. So let's just click that down for a minute. If we go to the three minute chart, hopefully it will still be on this chart. It was so far, uh, no, I think it's too far and I can't actually get it back and the VPOX actually moved. But let's move to the 12 minute chart here. This was the this was the, um, as I said, the three minute chart, the price action was on the on the VPOC looking to break away from the volume point of control. How it corresponded on the 12 minute, we actually saw this two bar reversal off the support platform at 86.47. It's about the 86.50 region. You can see here a little bit of congestion uh, preceding that. And this was the two bar reversal. Now on the hourly chart, which was quite nice, we actually had the hammer candle. So what I'm talking about setups, if you like, on charts, not only do you have to see it on the chart where you're looking to take the trade, but you have to look at what the condition of the chart is in multiple time frames and see if you have this confluence of, of setups. And this was just a really nice example of when all of these things come together, we then look at the price action, we look at the candle candle patterns, we've got a sort of double bottom down there. Again, this very strong platform, it's, we had an effort to rise there, then a retest of this support line, which often happens, and then we had the move away. And the move away started really in the three minute chart as a break away from, as I said, the volume point of control here. So this is the, the pound Aussie, what's happened. What I also said this morning was in terms of targets, and I think the target has actually moved since then, is the first uh, target was here because the this VPOC is dynamic. It actually moves as these areas are built in terms of support and resistance through volume. It's transacted volume. It's, it's, it's pause points 
in the chart where the market just doesn't want to go in one direction or another because maybe it's waiting for a piece of fundamental news or there's going to be a change of session so it pauses there and the um until we have a break from that region either up or down this is where the volume point of control will sit now at the moment it's moved up again but um, it's on the recording that's up on YouTube at the moment and I believe was it about there David the target that we were going for I think at that point it started it was there at that point and clearly it's now moved up because we've now got a period of congestion at this level here which is 87.68 so that's we're going to be focusing more and more in looking at these opportunities by looking at the condition of the chart, what are the setups that the charts are telling us? What are they telling us in the different time frames? Do we have a kind of confluence? Um, you know, what are, what are the indicators also telling us? What are the candle patterns telling us? What is the uh, volume? What is the uh, VP? What is VPA telling us? And then putting it all together and really moving forward from there. So that's it from a technical perspective. Lots and lots going on from a fundamental uh, political perspective, as always. Uh, markets still uh, reacting to what happened with the FOMC yesterday. I think there's also some news that there's some problems with the um, with the China US um, uh, trade discussions, David, is though they've cancelled out, yeah. I think. And, you know, uh, oh, that's right. The, the, that was the trigger this morning. Here we are. What does it say? Sometimes the thing is with headlines, even on um, sites such as investing.com, who I think actually, like all these sites, they do a pretty good job of trying to keep us, uh, you know, ahead of um, up to date with these sometimes can be very fast moving market you know you, you look at a headline you have to be very careful uh, but I think it's pretty much uh, sums it up Wall Street falls on fresh fresh trade uh, jitters and we can see here the S&P futures are actually down there well over they're comfortably over at 3000 which also brings us to what we said last week which on the indices we looked at the Dow uh, the Dow futures on the monthly chart and I think and I, I know again you can look you can go and listen to the recording if you haven't uh, if you weren't with us at that session David and I in our view it was not a distribution phase because of the nature of the candle patterns within the long consolidation phase that we have had on the indices and now coming up to two years David now there's two years lots of volatility again recognizing the, the condition of the chart to give you an idea of the trading uh, conditions that you can expect you know uh, ahead of you right so that's that and let's have a look what trading this is actually a forex a new site that i use but it covers all the markets as well here we are what does it say uh oh, well he's always criticizing the fed isn't he and what have you uh do, do, do. let's have a look trying to sit will not sit back and just deploy image oh fine okay the usual rhetoric let's have a look they're working on oh that's right they cancelled out on where they were going to sit down and sign the phase one of the trade agreement but uh, a new a new location is to be announced who knows you know it's, it will be when it will be and as traders we just have to be aware of it and uh, you know deal with the, vol the volatility as and when it it uh, it occurs um, if you want to read let's have a look quickly this is my site unless you haven't come across it before anacooling.com assuming it uh, loads up Doo -doo -doo -doo. there we are there are all the books uh, these are the latest uh, blog posts that uh, mainly mainly the markets not forex I tend to stick to forex commentary on my Facebook page and as I said you will get things such as this um, uh, illustrated um, charts really to explain primary trends secondary trends etc etc just follow up to to webinars and also interesting uh, outside resources that I think may help you as a trader and make sense of the markets the indicators that we'll be using are from quantumtrading.com and we'll refer to them as we move through the session let me just bring my charts back up there we are so i'm going to pass over to david who i think is you ready for me he's come back 
<laughs> he always went, well, you were rushed out. I thought, what the heck's going on? I didn't know what was going on for a minute. Anyway, any questions, please drop them into the chat box. Uh, we'll happily answer them uh, for you. Um, otherwise, um, I think we'll just crack on. Absolutely, thank you. Thanks, darling. And a very warm welcome to you wherever you are in the world. As I said this morning, I hope it's nicer where you are than it is here, because it's uh, pretty miserable. Just pulling the Ninja Trader up. There we go. I'm looking over on Alice. That's all up and running, so that's great. Hopefully, you can hear me okay. And uh, just checking out what's going on at the moment. Okay, we're on. The, I've got the Nasdaq up at the moment. Uh, I've got the time frame, 15 second, very quick. I said this morning, I'm not advocating this as a um, de facto standard that you, you apply. It's just I happen to like it because uh, it uh, keeps you very sharp in terms of VPA reading. And I also happen to like it when I'm scalping the markets because it's just super fast. And if you can read VPA quickly, then it gives you an immediate heads up as to what is coming up in the one, two, three, four, five minute, whatever time frame you're trading. So I've got 15 second here, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Just I do have the chat box closed, so apologies if I don't answer your question straight away. Anna's just highlighted. Um, uh, would you say this multiple time frame approach is appropriate? Look for momentum, uh, and then trade the pullback. The I would say that of uh, to answer your question, Summer, of all choose my words carefully, but of of all the technical principles that you can apply i would say using multiple time frames is in our humble opinion i mean other people will disagree uh two traders will disagree about um any any aspect of trading but if you wanted our opinion for what it's worth multiple time frames are the key to the approach whatever that approach may be whether you're using indicators whether you're just using vpa um whether you're using fundamental it doesn't matter uh, and it applies not only to the charts, but it also applies to the indicators because what you're seeing from a faster time, there's two things. First of all, you'll see from the faster time frames what is likely to flow through into the slower time frames. It's the pebble in the pond analogy that I've used many, many times. Uh, it ripples through. It always starts in the fastest and goes out to the slowest. So that's one reason for using it. It gives you that heads up on what is coming up at you. And if you're using a three chart approach, which typically a lot of traders do, and the middle chart is your your trading window, if you like, your, your main uh, highway, the, the main lane on your highway. So you've got a lane on your left hand and a lane on your right hand. And if you're trading in the middle lane, you're seeing what's coming up ahead of you, goes through your trading perspective. And ultimately, if it's a a trend that's developing or a reversal that's developing, it will flow through into your slower time frame on the other side. It's a very simple principle. And the other aspect to it is obviously use that with indicators as well, exactly the same way. But more importantly, when you're looking at multiple time frames, it also gives you a heads up. I'm just going to move the chat box out of the way because it's covering up my chart. Sorry. See what's going on as I'm talking. Um, the other aspect to it is it gives you a perspective on other reasons that a market has paused in your particular time frame, you see levels of support, levels of resistance, volume points of control, different volume profiles, buying and selling. You'll have uh, all sorts of uh, signals which will come up. You'll see, for example, a volatility indicator. It may trigger in one time frame, but not in another. It'll give you a heads up as to what to expect. You know, why is this market pausing and congested? Well, if you've got a volatility trigger somewhere else, that's the reason why. It's all of that and a lot more. So I hope that answers that one for you. So apologies, I do have the chat box closed when I'm in full flow. Okay, we've got across the time frames, got 15 second, five minute, 10 minute on the top, 15 minute down the bottom, 60 minute in the middle, and over here we've got the daily. Just to we'll just go back onto the other three indices, the other two sisters with this one, which is where is it? Here we go. There we go. Right. These are the three primary indices in the US. We've got the YM. The NQ and the ES, the YM is the uh, Dow 30, NQ, NASDAQ 100, and ES is derivative for uh, S&P 500. So we've got five minute time frame, exactly the same time frame across the top. Down the bottom, we've got the daily charts for all those three in, uh, those three indices. They're all on the December contracts now. And the other reason for having all three up here, and this is not a multiple time frame approach, but it's a multi-market approach, if you will, 
is because uh, first of all you do get divergence from time to time i think we had some last week or the week before where you will see one index which is leading i think it was the nasdaq that was leading or perhaps it was the other i can't remember now whether it was the ym and the es leading and the nasdaq was following or vice versa so you do see divergence Generally speaking, you, you would anticipate these markets moving together in lockstep, and normally they do. But intraday, you do get divergence where one is down and others are up, and it gives you a heads up as to the opportunities developing. Because if you've got two indices which are rising and another one's falling, it's a pretty good signal that, or vice versa, that the two are likely to pull the other one along. And therefore, you know, it's a, good, it's a lower risk opportunity, if you will. What's interesting right now, if I just pop up the dailies, and again, it, it just highlights that particular point. If I just pull that out a little bit, you maybe can't see it, but this is the NASDAQ. That's the wick on the NASDAQ. It's fallen. It fell on this um, reaction to yet more uncertainty over China, but it's now starting to recover and pull back. But if you look at the equivalent on the Dow, the size of the wick there is much less demonstrable. So you've got a much wider spread candle with a smaller wick. And it's just indicative of the fact that of those two, the NASDAQ is, slowing, is showing more bullish intent, if you will. And the same is also true over on the ES. Again, quite a small wick, quite a wide body. So again, it's a, it looks as though it's shaping up to another potential move where the NASDAQ is trying to lead the others higher. In terms of the five minute time frames, what are we actually looking at? Well, again, you know, it's back to multiple time frames. We've got a lot of uh, price resistance overhead. We've got this red line, which is very wide. And for those who come along regularly, oops, my headsets just dropped out a little bit. So uh, for those who come along regularly, you'll know this is the accumulation distribution indicator. It's based on price. So it's looking at it from the traditional technical perspective of price based resistance and support where a level a region has been tested and retested several times. The greater that occurs, then the wider will be the line. So every time this is tested, it gets thicker. Um, it's a little bit like um, uh, Popeye and spinach. The more you eat, the you know the bigger the muscles. That's the it's that kind of thing. So these levels up here, these are relatively minor. They're still there, but they're nothing like as strong as these guys here. And these are also surrounding. So we've got resistance above. We've got a platform of support below, which we've actually gone through. We're now coming up to test the volume point of control, which is this yellow line, which is where we've got the heaviest concentration of volume. The key now is really down to volume and how the volume plays out and whether the market has got enough volume to drive through not only the volume point of control on five minute, uh, but also, just get rid of that, sorry about that, but also through this very strong ceiling of resistance. You can see it was tested here, capped it off and held, uh, but we're now waiting to see if that's breached. If that's breached on good volume, then we could see a further move higher. And as we move higher, this volume on the fit of volume histogram is falling away. And it acts in exactly the same way as, as price-based support and resistance. In other words, the, the more pronounced the volume, the deeper the volume, then the more difficult it is for the market to, to move through that. And therefore, it'll need more volume, more, more fuel, if you will, to breach it. So that's what we're seeing at the moment on the NASDAQ. You can see on the YM, we've got a bit of a way to go, but there's a big ceiling there. All right, it's uh, maybe 70 or 80 points above, and we've got this one, which is what, uh, eight points above on the ES. So if the, if the NQ is able to break through, that's fine, but it's then going to drag these two up, and these two are going to run into difficulty here. So that's the way you have to look at the, the, the way it's shaping down at the moment. Let's just head back onto the multiples. I'm just keeping an eye on the left-hand side, because over here, in fact, I'll pull it over in a moment for you. In fact, let me do that for you now. This is on TradeStation. Um, this is uh, this is the VIX. This is the uh, the VIX of the CBOE. Uh, for those of you not familiar with it, it, again, it's another powerful indicator to have if you're trading uh, indices, futures in any great way. You need to have this up somewhere. It's an inverse indicator. So when this is rising, equity markets are falling. When this is falling, equity markets are rising. I've got this on the one minute, the three minute, and the five minute across the top. Uh, down at the bottom here, I've got uh, the Renko, which we're in the process of, of developing. There's a few bugs to sort out in it, but uh, basically it's going to be run uh, with embedded indicators because we can't, we don't have an option to to um, enable them 
uh, automatically so we are actually go are going to hard code them into the indicator itself but basically this is the Renko that's running at a, a one minute time frame this is the CBOE on 10 and this is the daily chart down here uh, there's been a quite a lot of decline and, and that's why we're seeing a, a rally in the markets but this is the the price action today on the index with uh, the sharp move higher and it's it's just starting to come off a little bit got the trend monitor on here which helps to to give us a heads up on, on what is happening in terms of the trend so if you haven't got the uh, the VIX up anywhere I would urge you to do so if you're trading futures certainly index futures it just tells you about sentiment amongst other things but certainly that at the very least okay let's just focus on the NQ that's the five minute which we looked at a moment ago it's just coming up to the volume point of control there so we're expecting congestion we've got volume point of control here as well on the 10 minute and we've got it on the 15 minute and we've got it on the 60 minute so there's a hell of a lot of congestion which has got to be battled through before this market is going to rally in any great way and it's going to be all down to volume you can see the buying that came in this was the open a lot of heavy selling that was basically reaction we saw the reaction this morning but uh, there was more of it as the cash markets got underway with Globex this is all Globex volume so this is trading electronically this contract it trades 24 7 and now we're running in parallel with the cash markets we've got a big surge in volume heavy selling on the first one more heavy selling on the second one more selling on the third one so that's pretty three pretty straightforward candles to trade then we come into a doji candle indecision it's not indicative of a reversal it's just indecision decent volume under that one so there's buying and selling in there as well then we get the buying coming in under this candle big move to the downside rallies good volume lots of buying in there and we go up to the upside but now we're moving into congestion phase we're at the volume point of control we're expecting congestion purely because we are at the volume point of control it's what it tells you uh, if you don't have it on the chart you don't know it's there I can assure you it is there the volume is the heaviest on the chart expect congestion that's what you anticipate to happen next it's not going to go through there like a knife through butter it is bound to congest it may be for a short period but it will congest and it may struggle and it may come off there you just have to wait and be patient let's pop the five minute up We've got a platform of support under here as I mentioned earlier but we've got the volume point of control there and we've got it on 10 and we've got it on 15 so we just have to wait and be patient and that's where we are just to remind you that's where we are on the daily so just keep an eye on that just keeping an eye over on the other side what's happening in terms of the VIX it's kind of moving into congestion at the moment as well Let's just hop over onto the tick charts. There we go. This is basically uh, trading on tick charts, which are independent of time. I've got three here, and these figures uh, come off the tick speedometer here, which basically converts a one-minute time frame here to the equivalent or the optimal tick setting for that particular time frame for that particular chart we're on the ES here so I've, I've set these up for the uh, S&P 500 just to give you a different perspective and that is where the numbers come from because otherwise it's guesswork if you don't know what the tick setting is for a particular instrument and most traders don't then it's just a guess they haven't got a clue what the tick speedometer does it delivers that setting automatically this one's at 1597 tick this one's at uh, just change that over 4181 so that's at the correct speed now and this one is running at 10,946 so that's 10,946 there we go I'll just pop that one in the reason there are two numbers here is because uh, this actual number changes very frequently and you really don't want to be doing that every five I was going to say every five seconds but you know what I mean uh, you actually want to set these charts up and let them run for a reasonable period typically what I tend to do is if I'm trading in Globex when the cash markets are not open then I'll use the actual uh, but when the pair of them are running as they are now then I will use this number which is is how we devise a, a mechanism to arrive it's nothing to do with Fibonacci other than it's a mechanism to derive the closest number to the actual which is more stable in terms of uh, the chart for when the markets are running together 
you can see the color uh, here is uh, flip-flopping between what you're looking for here is activity you're looking for green or, or orange the red is indicative of a market that's slowing down it's lacking pace it's lacking momentum it's lacking participation this is all about participation what the tick chart does is reveals momentum because what you see on a tick chart is exactly the same as a Renko chart because there is no time element to those charts the chart builds according to activity and momentum if the market is fast moving then the tick chart will build very quickly if it's sluggish and slow moving it'll build slowly you don't see that on a time based chart because it's governed by time these charts are not governed by time every one of these candles here on this particular chart 1597 tick uh, is that's there's a 1597 ticks gone through the market and when that's happened however long that takes whether it's a nanosecond or a millisecond or a microsecond or a second or a few seconds it doesn't matter it will build that candle according to this metric not time and therefore it will then move on to the next one so there's a lot of ticks flowing through the market in other words a lot of participation and activity these candles will build very quickly and that's the reason a lot of traders like to trade tick charts particularly for futures trading and also Renko charts because they reveal that raw momentum at the moment it's very sluggish you can see the indicators just flagging it it's telling you this is running slow this is running slow on three minute this is running slow on five minute it color codes as well tells you we're in red and it's very very sluggish what's interesting though is this number down here 10,946 if this were the YM this number would be maybe a couple of thousand and that's the huge difference across these indices the ES is the most heavily traded it's massively traded by algos they will all jump in as soon as the market opens so there's a huge amount of algo trading going on in here uh, which is why the tick activity is so so high it's less high on the NQ and certainly less so on the YM so we're in a bit of congestion at the moment it's a question of being patient before we jump in and what it also means is that excuse me if you if you want to trade in these sorts of congested markets then you do have to step down to the faster time frames you have got to step down to these very fast time frames of 15 second 30 second whatever it may be uh, to pick out trades because if you're trying to do it on a one or two or three minute when it's when it's moving in this sort of pattern it's a hopeless uh, case you just won't do it but you can certainly do it volume can be read in exactly the same way on a 15 second chart as it can on a minute chart five minute whatever it is it doesn't make any difference you can see here on this rally we've got this little rally going the volume is is in line but it's it's not terribly strong look at the last candle there that little up candle tiny amount of volume very weak to the upside for the time being we've got light uh, uh, support here in terms of these price based regions they're all very weedy uh, they're not thick they may be tested once and that's it so in terms of a move to the downside there's very little in the way of, of price to support it at the moment and the volume is pretty lightweight too little bit of buying under that one little bit of selling under that one it's all pretty lackluster at the moment excuse me sorry just hit the microphone and when it's trading in a range then you've got to make some decisions you've got to decide at what point you are going to jump into the market if I'm looking at this as a trade to the upside then clearly the level that has to be breached is at 8095 if we see a decent close beyond 8095 then that is the point at which I would probably jump in purely because several reasons first of all we're starting to break away assuming it's on decent volume we're breaking away from the volume point of control itself we will have cleared this massive amount of uh, potential uh, resistance which then becomes access support and in addition to that we've then got volume falling away and finally above this we've got very lightweight in terms of price based resistance to hinder progress so if the market does manage to claw its way up here anywhere close to 8100 then that's the point at which I will be looking to get in and take that higher as the market develops and just looking at the other time frames just going down onto the 15 and going back to the earlier question about uh, you know multiple time frames again what you're looking at here is you're looking at a similar thing you're thinking okay well if I get in the 8100 on a five minute time frame down up in up in here somewhere then 
what is the 15 minute chart going to do to my potential opportunity to the upside? Is there a load of resistance that's going to come into play? Um, you know, what have I got in the way? And, you know, how's the volume shaping up? You can see it's all falling away here. So really, you've got a straight run up to this level here where that is where you'd run into resistance. And that is where you'd, you'd have to make a decision and say, OK, well, if I'm going to get in here, you know, is this enough for me in terms of whatever risk I'm putting on the table in terms of my stop loss? That's the question you've always got to answer. And as Anna said this morning, uh, a lot of traders talk about risk and reward. You know, I have to have two to one or three to one and all that sort of stuff. I'm sure you've heard it. You may believe it. I'm sorry if I'm telling you something you don't want to hear. Um, but it, it doesn't work like that. And the way to do it correctly, in our opinion, and again, it's only our opinion, we have been doing this for, for 20 odd years, the two of us. So, you know, we do have a decent amount of experience. Uh, the, the one thing you have to do is look at the chart, let the chart tell you, dictate to you how much opportunity you've got in that particular trade. You know, is it worth it? Uh, what have I got that's going to cause a barrier to the move higher? And if I'm happy, uh, even if it's one to one, fine. You know, I'll, I'll take a one to one trade every day of the week. I'll put... Uh, you know, $100 on the table and take $100 or however much you're putting on the table. That's fine. I haven't got a problem with that. A lot of traders do this. Oh, no, I've got to, I've got to be able to, to see $200 or $300 if I'm going to put $100 out. The market doesn't work like that. The market doesn't care about what you need in terms of risk or any other thing. So use the chart for what it is. It tells you all these levels from a technical perspective. I appreciate, you know, it's not a fundamental perspective, but it tells you from a technical perspective. Markets rallied up to the uh, the volume point of control again, come into play, and uh, you know it's reversing off it again. It's just that's what you expect. You're not expecting at the moment for for anything else. What we're looking for is possibly a breach of this, which is a nicely developed area above on the 15 second. But if we go up into a five minute, it's really getting through this this level here to get to 8100 so 8100 you and you might say well I'm giving up 15 points here that uh, if it gets there I've I've lost 15 points in the trade well yeah but that's with hindsight at the moment you don't know which way this market's going to break so it's just a question of being patient and waiting yeah Just open up the chat box. Apologies. Okay, right. Do you use market delta or delta profiles on the vertical axis? Um, we just use, uh, I have to be honest and say, we just use the, the indicators we've developed and of which the volume uh, point of control is, is one. And that is, the, we're always looking at other uh, aspects to volume. Um, and delta is certainly one of them purely because. Um, probably on TradeStation. It depends on the complexity of the data feed and how sophisticated it is. There, you can do certain things with certain feeds which you can't do with others. And it's something we are constantly looking at and constantly thinking about. And I say with TradeStation, there are several indicators that we are considering developing for the future. And that is certainly one uh, that, that we've got in the back of our minds. Because we are a volume-based company, we're always looking at other opportunities for bringing in other aspects of volume to, to the charting process. Do you teach your multi-time frame approach in more detail? We do, Sam. We have a, uh, it, is, it is a Forex-based program. Uh, you can find it on quantumtradingeducation.com. What I would say, though, is the principles, all the principles that are taught in, in that program can be lifted onto any other instrument or market that you care to mention. There is obviously forex specific uh, content in there, quite a lot of it, but the actual principles of trading uh, in the style that that you'll see here, it, it's it's uh, it's all covered in that particular program. It's one of the other things we are considering with the education is actually building it out to cover other markets because it is forex specific right now, and one of the things we want to do once Trade Station is launched is actually build out into a a stock stroke investing futures type program. But a lot of those principles are identical. Volume price analysis, you can apply to any market you like. As long as you've got a, a chart with price and volume on it, that's all you need. You don't actually need to know what's at the top of the chart. It's as simple as that. Just seeing some selling coming in here. Uh, sorry, just cut in there. 
uh, you know, very simple, nice widespread down candle, good wick to the, you know, little wick to the underside, but no great, uh, great buying. And you've got decent volume under there, so you've got decent amount of selling. A little bit of buying coming in after that one with the, uh, with the little hammer candle there, but it's the trend, trend monitor's turning red. The trend line's starting to dive. It's starting to signal that this market is looking weak. Got all this resistance overhead. I appreciate this is 15 seconds, so it's bloody quick. Excuse my language. Uh, but there we go. Another heavy selling under that one. Nice big volume bar. You know, this is sell, sell, sell at the moment until the buyers come in. You know, that's where we're heading. This is what I meant. If you want to trade these markets in uh, in, in semi-congestion phases, then you've got to move down to the faster time frames. The, the moves are there. You've got to be quick, light on your feet. Doesn't suit everybody. We enjoy it. Some traders hate it. They wouldn't uh, wouldn't do this to uh, uh, to save their lives. It's that's but that's trading. It's it's what you've got to find what suits you and what works for you. Let's just stay on the 15 second because it does actually move even though the market is pretty congested. Okay, now we've got some buying coming in. Pretty good buying actually under that candle. Nice two bar reversal as well. Overlay on that one. What have you got? You've got a two bar. You've got a single candle of a hammer, if you will. It's a two bar reversal. See if it's enough to push the market higher. Okay, weakness under that one. We've got a wick to the upper body. Decent volume there. Got a bit of resistance in overhead as well, helping helping to suppress the market, keep it down. Pivot gone in as well, signaling a move, short term uh, change in uh, in sentiment. Markets tried to rally, so it tried to rally. Weakness going down again. Next level, next floor down. Here we go. More selling under that one. Just keeping an eye on what's going on. Let's just pull the, uh, see what's going on over here. Pull this across. There we go. Got it on another screen. This is on the VIX. Starting to tick up. Ticking up here. It's ticking up here. You can see the trend monitor down here has reverted back to blue again. Renko down here is kicking up again. Down on 10. Starting to move higher. Very weak at the moment. Just move that out of the way. Pop that over there. There we go. Let's see how much more selling pressure we can get. <clears throat> okay, we're coming down to a low volume node now on uh, on this time frame. So there's nothing really to to prevent it falling there. Just stepping down onto the 60. This candle here is um, is a classic one. Of, often look for this in. Uh, reversals against a bearish trend where the markets tried to rally and the weakness still remains good volume under the candle nice wick to the upper body it's uh, it's what I refer to perhaps with a little bit more of a body to it but we refer to it as a, as a water filled balloon where you're filling a balloon with water and it gradually gets heavier and heavier until it explodes it's that sort of concept um, it's just a great candle to look for if you're in a downtrend and you get a rally and you get these with decent volume under there. It's just a strong signal that the market is going to carry on lower. It's tried to rally and it's just remaining very weak. Okay, trend monitor hasn't transitioned through to red here. It's come out of uh, the bullish phase. It's gone into dark blue. We may go through if we go continue low. We may go into um, a darker red and out the other side into bright red. Alternatively, we may go into, into straight through. Some decent buying under that last candle there. Nice little wick to the lower body, high volume. Strong, strong buying there. See if it follows through. Desperately trying to rally all the time and it's just not following through. Off that candle, you want to see the, if the market is going to rally, you want to see the next candle widespread up with good volume as well. I'm just not seeing it. You're seeing the sellers coming in again. It's hit down. Having said that, the volume is falling away on those last two, so it's not falling through in terms of selling pressure either. See what the next candle delivers. Trend monitor is keeping you in. Notice the trend monitor hasn't transitioned at all. We had a little rally. It's just carrying on straight through. A little bit of dark red coming in there. That may transition out the other side. 
down onto 15, just keeping an eye. The VIX is ticking up, it's up to 1364 now. Uh, trend monitor is blue on there, just pull that over again, just to keep tabs on that one. There we go, this is the one minute. So trend monitor is in blue, VIX is ticking up, ticking up here, transition through to blue there. Bit of a spike up now, 1367. So that's pushing the markets lower. Remember it's inverse, so as the VIX rises, markets fall, so it's what you're expecting to see. It's all very straightforward once you know where to look and what to do. Spiked up again, the VIX up to 1369 now. 1373, it's rising quite quickly. Renko is rising nicely as well, nice and solid. Okay. Bit of a drop off in volume there. You can see we've got um, three candles there. You've got falling price, falling volume. What are you expecting to see off that? You're expecting to see a rally. Why? Because if the market is going to fall, you want to see rising volume, not falling volume. It's exactly the same principle. In a rising market, you want to see rising volume. In a falling market, you want to see rising volume too. Because it takes effort. Everything takes effort, whether it takes effort to rise or effort to fall. We all understand gravity. Intuitively, it takes effort to get something off the ground. But the same is true in trading when a market is falling. It needs effort, needs volume, needs fuel. If it hasn't got it, it's not going far. So when you get anomalous price action like that, what that's telling you is expect the market to rally. It may not rally very far. This may be a, uh, it's another facet we cover in great detail in the program is the prior, difference between primary and secondary trends. If you understand and can identify when a secondary trend is underway, in other words, it's a pullback and not a reversal, that will help to keep you in the primary trend for so much longer. It's just so, so important. And that's done through the prism of volume price analysis. VIX has spiked up again. It's up to 1381 now. Dropped a couple of points down to 1379. Volume point of control has dropped. You can see it. It actually dropped when I was talking. Uh, the volume here, we're now moving to congestion phase. One of the other facets we teach uh, is, is to understand pivots here. These are very simple. They just work on a three candle principle. But the way we use them, not only to identify intraday uh, changes in sentiment, short term changes in sentiment at any rate, but also help to explain when a congestion phase is building, the precursor to it, as they appear, we've got a pivot low, then we get a pivot high. OK, possibly congestion. Then we get a pivot low pretty much the same region. So we know we're moving into congestion. The volume point of control is confirming that. Trend line is rising. And that's what we're waiting for. We're waiting for a move away from that particular congestion phase. We're waiting for other pivots to develop. Let's see how far this rally goes. Trend monitor is just starting its transitional color change. You can see the trend line is starting to rally a little bit. Volume is pretty low, though. Look at the volume here. It's not great. The selling pressure is pretty light as well. See how the selling pressure is uh, diminished as well. And if you align that candle over here, here we had pretty heavy selling in this region. And now in this region, which is exactly the same price area, it was pretty low. What that's telling you is, it's a more subtle uh, technique, if you will, but what it's telling you is we've gone into an area that was high volume and has now become low volume in terms of selling pressure. And therefore, what that tells you is that the selling pressure in that area has diminished and likely to be drained away. And therefore, we may well see a reversal into a bullish phase because the selling pressure here is not the same as it was here. In other words, it's all been absorbed. Trend monitor is now transitioning through to bright blue. And there was some buying coming in on this candle and also some buying coming in this candle. If, we, if this is to develop into anything half decent, then you know the volume needs to be a little bit stronger than what we're seeing at the moment with the associated price action. The VIX has... Sorry, Dan. The VIX has come off. We're back down to 13.71. So we spiked down from 13.80 down to 13.71. And that's why we're seeing this, this little rally develop. 
Anna's just highlighted that David left some comments in the chat. Excuse my bad typos, and probably no worse than mine, David, I can assure you. Um, uh, let's just have a look. Uh, David, thank you. I've 100% vouched I lifted my forex skills into futures, hard and breakfast, right? Commodities quickly and successfully. Fantastic. Just, uh, just a joy to hear. Um, I think I'd also echo on someone who trades these fast times that there's not always a trade. Pick your moments. Sometimes lots of trades are now, sometimes none. Patience. Absolutely. Uh, it is about patience. Um, the fine line is always between patience and having the say the bottle but the you have to jump in at some point that's always the fine line you can't wait for perfection if you wait for perfection and everything to align then you'll almost certainly be getting in when everyone else or certainly the market makers are getting out and vice versa you have to go in at some point you make that decision you have your stop losses in place and you just get on with it it, it it's it's it is that routine and I can't describe it in any other way that once you do this regularly, it does become like that. It becomes routine. You're quite, and the thing is that you have to accept a loss. You have to be able to take a loss and just ignore it and move on. Don't brood about it. Don't let it worry you. Don't think the market's made you look stupid. Market doesn't care. Uh, your broker doesn't care. Nobody cares except you. Just get on with it. Do the next one. Keep the losses small. And the key thing is to try and hold the positions for, to maximize whatever it is that you can from a position for as long as possible. And part of that is to do with understanding the difference between primary and secondary trends, which is a great application of volume price analysis. It's probably one of the most powerful applications simply because it then gives you the mechanism and the tools to um, allow the mathematics of trading to work in your favor because if you're taking small losses which we all do then that's fine that's part and parcel but if you can't maximize those bigger winners then it's never going to outweigh your smaller losses so you'll get you, your trading account will kind of bumble along and, and maybe sort of decline slowly over time it's not going to not going to collapse but it won't move forward the way it moves forward is when you have some small losses and then you, you then lump in a decent decent big winner that's the, and that's the key. Volume price analysis helps you in that respect in terms of understanding the difference between primary and secondary and also, of course, the tools and indicators. One of the reasons we developed Trend Monitor to try to to take a more considered view of the trend to help to keep you in. And going back to the first question, using it in multiple timeframes is so, so powerful because you will get changes on the faster timeframes. But if they don't ripple over into your trading window, or out to the slower time frames, then it's just simply a pullback reversal and the primary trend has not been breached. Just keeping an eye on what's going on on the VIX. It's uh, It's gone into its shell a bit. Let's pull that over. There we go. That's the rank see moving up nicely. Um, it's still it's still rising. This is on the day in a tiny wick to the upper body. So it's still pretty negative. And until that starts to reverse more strongly, then you know the bearish sentiment is going to maintain hold for the time being. Push that back over there. Let's go and see what's happening. I'm just going to have a quick look at commodities. Some decent moves in uh, both oil and gold earlier on. Uh, that's oil at the top. That's uh, the December contract for the uh, WTI. So that's on uh, one minute, five minute, and over on the daily chart there. And this is gold down at the bottom here, which has had a decent rally. Uh, certainly uh, this morning, been uh, been under the cosh for some time. But again, it's another market, you know, on a broader time scale that's in congestion. That's the daily chart for gold. Really is in congestion. The volume point of control. Lots of resistance above. Very little in the way of support below. Um, but it's uh, and it's one of the issues we highlighted with gold has many different facets. I won't go into them now, but certainly the the dollar relationship uh, broke down recently. It's kind of coming back a little bit. These relationships come and go. They're not uh, cast in stone. Um, commodities up, dollar down, and vice versa. Um, but uh, it it's broken down. It may be coming back into to re-engage a little bit. Uh, but there's so many other drivers for gold at the moment. 
and as indeed there always are. Just go back on, just a quick look on, see what's going on in terms of currencies. These are the uh, individual currency charts on five minute time horizons. This is the yen, the dollar, the euro, and the British pound. And again, from a sentiment perspective, another chart you'd have up, you'd obviously have the yen up because you want to see what risk on and risk off sentiment is doing. Um, and this is pretty much, it's indicative. This is the big buy in uh, the Japanese yen that was reflected in the big fall in equities. Now we're starting to see it reverse a little bit, go into congestion, rallying, reversing, what have you. There's no strong pattern at the moment to really reflect that in terms of the yen. And obviously the Aussie yen is, is one in particular that's a good proxy for risk, which we use a lot uh, for giving us a heads up on, on flow. Because this business is just about flow. It's just about making money, whether you want a higher risk, higher reward, or you want lower risk, lower reward. Is money chasing safe haven or is it looking for risk? That's all it's about, whether it's in bonds, whether it's in equities, whether it's in commodities, or whether it's in currencies. It's as simple as that. That's all this is about. It's just a constant flip-flop between risk on and risk off. And all the markets are related. There's another facet we cover in, in big detail in the relational aspect, the relational module in the Forex program. Okay, let's head back. A quick call on the tick charts. And you get a sense of, uh, it, this tells you instantly that, uh, you know, the, 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 the market is pretty sluggish right now. This has gone to 987, the one minute. So this was 1597. We've now dropped to 987. We're flip-flopping red and orange. This is 2584. This was uh, 4181 before. And this was up at 10,900 odd. This is now dropped to 6765, which is pretty low for the ES. This can get up to 20 odd thousand from time to time when it's really rampaging. And at the moment, it's pretty sluggish. And that's what we're seeing. Pretty sluggish markets. Let's go back onto time based charts. There we go. <clears throat> We've got levels building here on 15 second. We've got the volume point of control. We've got volume building here as well. Nevertheless, that was a decent move. That was from, uh, where were we? Uh, 86 down to 74, 72, all the way down to 66. So as I said earlier, if you want to trade in these markets, then you're going to have to go down to these fast time frames, pick out the trades and be light, very light on your feet. That's where we started. Anna and I started, believe it or not, in the futures market, uh, trading FTSE 100 futures. And it was £10 a point. Yeah, it was $13, $14 a point. This is, tw this is over 20, this is practically 20 years ago. There was no, very little internet. It was all done through satellite feeds and what have you. And it was all done over the phone. We would pick up the phone, ring the broker. The broker would place the order onto the floor of the exchange. You'd hear all that going on on the squawk. And by the time the order was filled on the floor, uh, the market will have moved on and you may even have been stopped out. It was that slow, if you will. Um, but that's where we started. Hard stops, five point stops. Didn't even bother looking at the chart. We just put a hard stop in. That was it. You just rang the, rang the broker, placed the order, filled at five point. That was it, buy or sell. Um, but it was a great way to learn. And we loved it. And, but that's where we started. Very unusual. Um, I think most traders probably start in, I don't know, with maybe some knowledge of stocks or um, perhaps in, in Forex, uh, whatever. But um, that wasn't the way we started. That was all good fun. Two huge monitors, which weighed an absolute ton. Um, and it cost a fortune as well, I seem to remember. We had a satellite dish on the outside of the house and... It was all very funny. Special phones and direct lines and God knows what else. Oops, sorry about that. Okay, go away. Anna says the YM's died as well. Yeah, it's not great. It's just very weak at the moment. That's on the 60, tried to rally up there. Good volume under there. You know, it's giving a signal. This is this is pretty weak. There's no great incentive to buy at the moment. 
trend monitors transition through. We've had that burst of activity. We went into the bullish phase. Now we've come out on the other side. Excuse me, I'm just going to switch off for a minute. Sorry, you don't want to hear me coughing in your ear. That was a little rally, and it, it's, I guess, this phase of price action here. You know, you're looking at something and you think, is this going to go higher? And really, it's what the trend monitor is about. It's trying to keep you in, it's trying to signal whether this move has actually expired in terms of, of upside momentum. Never actually got into bright red at this point. It went dark red and you might have been thinking, do you know what, I think this is going to reverse. And then it comes out the other side and goes back into blue. And then we get the transition through into the other phase of price action where we've gone dark blue into darker red and come out the other side into darker, into bright red, which is the classic pattern. It doesn't always do that. Um, but really, that's what it's about. And it's just trying to help you to stay in the position to maximize it for as long as possible and it comes back to using multiple time frames. It's so, so important. And now we've got some more good levels in here. Very strong resistance overhead, 71 and 73. We've got the volume point of control here, which may move if we can just around this region. These, uh, The volume point of control, it's not a static thing. It will move according to uh, the, the build-up in volume as these volumes change up and down the chart. It's all about time. The longer a uh, phase of price action sits at one region, then that volume will build. Let's have a look at the 10-minute. I've looked at the 10-minute for a while. This is more like the balloon, the, 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 the sort of um, candle I was referring to, this, this sort of water-filled balloon where you get a rally, tries to rally, falls back exhausted, closes, and you get this nice big body and it's filling up with water and then you know you're looking for a bang on down to the next level as the balloon explodes silly analogy i know but there we go i like analogies just having a look at the uh, vix it's uh, ticking back up again it's gone up about 10 points got down to 1362 it's up at 1376 again I know we've got quite a lot of new people here. Just pull up some of the, um, just while that's, keep an eye on things. If you're not familiar with us, this is um, this is who we are. This is uh, Anna, Anna's site, annacooling.com. You'll find all the books there. Uh, this is where we do a lot of market analysis. We've got box sets here as well. They all go through to Amazon. Um, and you'll also find lower down, you've got all the Facebook pages as well. Uh, the Quantum Trading Facebook page, Anna's Forex Tra Facebook page. We try and keep them reasonably up to date with things as they're going on in the market. This is where you find all the indicators at quantumtrading.com. Uh, we currently have all the indicators for MetaTrader 4.5, NinjaTrader 8, 7 and 8, and also TradingView. As I say, we're working on TradeStation right now. Uh, it's, it's a lot of work. It probably won't be available until the early part of next year because we have all the support pages to do, videos to do. We've got other indicators which need debugging, all sorts of things. Um, but it will appear here and we'll keep it uh, updated in lab in the quantum labs, which is labs.quantumtrading.com, which I've got up at the moment. Um, you can invest in one indicator. You can buy bundles of indicators. The one thing that's universal is that you only pay once. That's it. You get 24-7 support and it's genuine 24-7 support. You'll get answers on Saturday, Saturday night, Sunday morning. Whatever time, because we have customers all around the world, 24-7, that's what we offer. So you will get an email back pretty quickly, whatever time of day or night you email us. It's as simple as that. So it includes everything, includes the support, includes all the upgrades. So it's upgrades, whether an indicator is, is upgraded or whether it's a platform upgrade that we have to deal with. You never pay us any more. It's as simple as that. If you invest in a full package, you get all the future indicators we develop free of charge. It's that simple. It's just our way of saying thank you to you. And in terms of the education program, this is the Forex education program. These are the core modules, psychology, fundamental, relational, technical, and mechanics of trading module. And then below that, we have a huge array. We've got VPA chart examples, There's a massive number of examples in there. How to use the indicators, pulling it all together to get started trading. We've got a vast array of webinars that we recorded with, with all sorts of topics in there. 
there in the library as well and then there's a resource section as well and it's all, you also have access to the uh, VPA training room which I've got up here uh, which is hosted by us so it's all there VIX is uh, still climbing it's back up to 1378 again which is why we're seeing this this weakness come in here just pull it over once more just as we start to wrap up there we go see the Renko down here and the VIX is climbing across the time frames spiking up there up to 1381 so it's just following through on the weakness that uh, arrived this morning following the the comments and the uncertainty over China and, and the US trade how are we doing for time any more questions by the way okay yeah no nope. nope. okay uh, David thank you for that I didn't know that um, uh, using Ninja they have a similar approach that once you're investing in the platform any upgrades uh, you don't pay for etc terrific thank you for that David much appreciated I didn't know that It's a it's a model that we like. It's our business model, and we try and be fair to all our customers. And whatever you buy from us, you're always you will all receive a credit. If you buy an indicator and you want to upgrade to a full package, or you you buy a couple of indicators and you want to go to the full package, or maybe the education program, you will always receive a credit for what you've purchased. It's as simple as that. And also in transferring from platform to platform. If you have them on Ninja and you want to ultimately transfer to TradeStation, no problem. We don't charge. We just do it for you. Uh, there may be minor differences with indicators sometimes, but we always try and do it as as uh, um, I can't think of the word as, as as equitably as thank you, darling, as equitably as possible as we possibly can. And if there isn't a if there isn't a precise match of one indicator that maybe you've got is not replicated on another platform, we will always. Um, Generally speaking, we, we will uh, recompense you with other indicators in some way. So there's no cost in transfer. A lot of our customers start with uh, MT4, MT5, and then then migrate up to Ninja Trader. They want to trade futures, maybe, uh, maybe trade indices, commodities, whatever it may be. But they 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 learn their their skill on on a an intuitive all in one solution. It's a and with MT5, you've got multi asset. Uh, uh, availability anyway and it doesn't come at the same price as a futures contract because you're trading you're not trading with the the, the baggage of having to put up large uh, margin requirements which you do with futures uh, so it's a great way to learn you'll have all the markets there you'll have the indices you'll have the commodities all pretty much all the brokers are starting to offer mt5 now because it's just a, a replica of mt4 and they ironed out a lot of the things that prevented traders using it and now it's very popular so it's a multi-asset platform, exactly the same look and feel as MT, MT4. You've got a much broader array of timeframes to choose from, and it's a one-stop solution. So you get your charting, your brokerage, and, and for data feed all thrown in, in one. Yes, you pay for it in the spreads, but then you know there's no such thing as a free lunch in this business. Sorry, I'm keeping an eye on what's going on. Um, Sam, how much does the complete forex trading package cost? It includes. Um, it depends whether you go on the Ninja Trader or the uh, MT45 or Trading View. The reason Trading View is the cheapest is because it doesn't have all the indicators. Trading View, and it goes back to what I was saying earlier about the the the, the flexibility of of what we deal with as as developers. Uh, the Pine Script is not as flexible. Has doesn't have the power of MT, of MetaQuotes or of Ninja or nothing like a trade station either. Um, so some of the indicators we couldn't port, for example, the uh, currency matrix, currency array, and one or two others as well. In terms of the MT4.5 package cost, it's 13.91, but that includes all the indicators. So you're getting a full package of indicators, which, which, which uh, are bundled at 8.94 on the quantum trading site. And then the education element on top is just 4.97, works out at 13.91. And the Ninja Trader, equivalent because the ninja trader package has an additional indicator in terms of tick speedometer because mt45 doesn't offer live tick whereas ninja trader does has the tick speedometer i, sh I showed earlier 
that is 1694, I think, off the top of my head, forgive me. But it, the actual educational element is 497, and then underneath that is just whatever the cost of the full package of indicators is. I hope that makes sense. Um, but it's all here on quantumtradingeducation.com. Sorry, wrong one. There we go. Quantumtradingeducation.com. And here we are down here. Those are all the prices there. Whereabouts are we? You have to click on the buttons, but that's that's I can show you that those are the prices. But it includes all the knowledge and tools that you need. More congestion, I'm afraid. Um, and it's the same on the VIX, as you can see. Just pull it across. There we go. That's what we're seeing on the VIX. Trading in a 10 point range at the moment. Renko's moved into congestion. Congestion on three, congestion on five, and we've got indecision on 10 with a. Looks like. A... No, we don't sell the education on its own. The, the, uh, the program includes all the indicators. You have to buy the indicators and the. The educational element is 497, but you, we don't sell the educational element on its own. It includes the full package of indicators. We'd sell it as a complete package with the indicators because they are part and parcel of, of what we teach in the program. How are we doing for time? I've gone way over, gone way over time. Apologies. That's building into another classic congestion phase. And again, it's uh, defining your levels. Very strong platform of support in below. Strong ceiling resistance, volume point of call, slight bang in the middle. Uh, if you're going to trade this as breakaway, where are you looking for? You want to get out uh, somewhere around about here. If it gets down to that level, it's downside, upside. You want to get through this level here, through there, and then off and away. Some buying coming in under that candle. Look at the volume under it. It's actually the highest volume we've had pretty much, uh, well, certainly in the last 20, 30 minutes at any rate, bigger than this guy here. So we've got some, some decent buying coming into there. So we're looking for a rally now off that, uh, off that buying. Hitting resistance up here. Doji candle, <clears throat> indecision. So it's all pretty sluggish. Anything going on in uh, anything going on in the world of gold? Oh, gold. Okay, I'm just going to pass back to Anna for a change of voice because I've been uh, rabbiting on for far too long. As usual, gone way over time. Apologies about that. I lose track of time. All right, let me pass back to Anna for a moment. Any more questions? Okay, I hope we've answered all those for you. And uh, I'll pass back to Anna. And I will see you next week. Thank you for your time. Hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, I'll pass back to Anna. They were saying it's getting dark now outside. Well, yeah, so our clocks have gone back, but I don't think they've gone back in the States yet. That's why we're sort of two hours. That's why the um, the markets have been open as long as they have. Normally, we start when the markets have just opened in about an hour. Okay, we're back on my MT5 platform, and I've actually got a, a little works, a little profile that I've put together for gold, uh, because the number of uh, instruments that um, a lot of MT5 brokers offer these days, if I show you, very quickly on the market watch. 
Uh, goodness, these are just all the stocks that they that they use, that they offer. You've got all the, obviously the forex ones, and it just goes on and on and on and on. And it's got uh, gold, silver. It's got the uh, the indices. It's got the cash indices. As I said, it's um, you know the markets are accessible to everyone these days. It, you don't have to have um, certainly. Um, uh, you know, you don't have to have huge pockets uh, because some of the futures contracts can be a little bit expensive. Although, having said that, I believe the CME now have they got micro contracts? We we look we look at the E mini. We trade the E mini contracts uh, usually for the YM and the NQ, and latterly the NQ. But they have now introduced micro contracts to encourage more traders to participate in the futures market. And that obviously means that uh, your, um, uh, your your margin requirements aren't going to be as onerous. In other words, you don't have to have such a huge deposit. Right, same setup. I've got a Renko version of gold. I've got the three minute, I've got the 12 minute, and I've got the hour. And if the hour is a very interesting chart, because this a piece of price action here is actually from yesterday's Fed. Um, yesterday's Fed was a FOMC was really interesting because when he started speaking uh, of the statement and then especially the statement, it sounded as though he was actually being quite hawkish. So if you have the Dixie or you watch the dollar, which I hope you do, you will notice that the dollar started to climb quite uh, you know quite nicely. Uh, the euro dollar. Uh, fell quite uh, uh, quite smartly, and the dollar uh, rose. However, as the statement, uh, you know, as the markets absorbed what he was saying, it was actually uh, quite dovish. And what has happened is with gold. Gold has recently kind of fallen out of correlation uh, with the U.S. dollar. As the dollar has fallen, that has really been the excuse, the the catalyst for gold to start moving up. And as I said right at the beginning, the the trading conditions that you're facing on this chart, now on the hourly chart, we obviously had the uh, congestion that often happens, or often always happens, before a major news release. Then we had the first reaction, and then uh, we started, uh, once markets um, um, a kind of assimilated what he was saying, uh, gold started to move higher. And this is the hourly chart. The trend actually started further back here before this period of consolidation. We've got the trend dots changing blue. We've got the trend monitor uh, moving bright blue as well. We do have these, uh, it's quite a volatile, there's volatility within this uh, period of congestion, a volatility, um, a compression of time. Pretty wide uh, range in the in the candles, the volatility indicator triggered. Then we had uh, the wait for the, the Fed. We saw the volume uh, falling on these two very uh, narrow spread down candles. That was the reaction. The next candle is also a volatility candle. And then once that volatility, the, the top of that volatility candle was, uh, was taken out, we've had it moving steadily higher. We've had a little bit of congestion in Globex and then higher. And it's actually gone. It's topped out now at 15 uh, 15, 14. So this is the hourly chart. How we see that represented on the 12 minute chart here, we've got it going uh, right back here at one just under $1,500 uh, an ounce, and we've got a nice move higher. Now, what's interesting with the VPOC, when you have, have when you have trend in this uh, in anything. And um, you obviously come, you may come to your computer and you think, oh my goodness, well, I've missed all that move. That's a very nice move. 1500 uh, to 1509, that's $9. That's a nice move in gold. What do you do? Well, the other way of using uh, something like the volume point of control, there's areas on the chart where you get these, these congestion phases. Um, basically, when it moves to there, that could also be, not only tells you that the price is actually maybe aiming for it, or coming back down to test it, but it's, it's also be a potential re-entry to the trend that we have seen in the slower time frame charts. What is very nice on this, we've actually got a nice hammer candle here at the bottom of this little secondary trend. This is the primary trend higher. This is the secondary pullback, if you like. Here we have the hammer candle, lots of buying underneath that candle, and we know that it's going to push up. Now, where is it going to go? Well, obviously, it's got to go through 1514, which is the high of the session to move, to carry on higher, as it were. We go back to the hourly chart. Where is the VPOC? Well, the VPOC is actually still back here, which is where the, the, the this nice move also originated from. Very clearly marked here on 1514. With support and resistance, we simply keep going up the time frames to find where this move is likely to pause, uh, slow down, you know, 
come to a stop for whatever reason. So we've got the, I'd like to go, let's see what the daily chart says. This is the big up candle on today. The volume is slightly less than that one, which is not always a good thing from the VPA perspective, because what you want is with a candle of that size, you really want to see an awful lot more volume than that. The good news is it's actually bounced off the VPOC at 1494, roughly the $1,500 per, per ounce region. And I suppose on the daily, what have you got? You've got 1527 up ahead. We've got this minor resistance that's been taken out. Let's move it down. Let's go to the four hours, see if we've got some uh, other levels. Uh, yeah, what's happened here? 15, well, 1517. This is this high from the 25th of October. So that's a, a reasonable. Um, target, if you like, price objective. What's also nice is if you look at the histogram on the volume point of control, you can see here this is much uh, narrower than it is at this point here. This is what we call a low volume node. This is a high volume node. Low volume node means there is, um, if the price manages to get through there and up to that level, it's going to go through fairly fast because there's no density of volume, volume as resistance, to hold up uh, the price as it moves higher. Much longer term, let's go to the monthly chart here, which, and let me sort of shrink that down a bit. If you recall, if you're a gold trader, this is the, uh, where are we, October, this is the August candle, which actually sort of rocketed up, and it it um, uh, resulted in this volatility candle. I, in other words, it was outside the average true range, which is unusual, very unusual for uh, a monthly candle. And the, this candle itself is also acting as support and resistance. The reaction that you get from a price action perspective when you get volatility is you get this retrace to within the spread of the candle. Now, this is the month. So last month, it wasn't a, pretty, wasn't a very good month for gold. That is tradable on an intraday basis. Longer term, this is what we expect. This is the resistance now at 1564, roughly in that area. Now it's had a little bit of a boost higher because of the uh, of, of the US dollar. But for longer term, if this trend that started off the, the volume point of control right back here at 1265 is to carry on higher, it has to take out the high of this candle, this strong resistance. And where's it going next? Well, you know, we've got 1686 and way, way, and then we're right back up to the good old days of uh, 1900. And, you know, OK, Powell may have said that there's no inflation, but there are lots of other problems out in the world at the moment that uh, will be po could be positive for gold. But it all depends on your time horizon. As a trader, you have to be aware of what the charts are telling you in the different time frames, and you basically play them accordingly in the time frame of your choice. Anything you want to add to that, David? No. That's it. That's it. We're done. Um, enjoy the rest of the trading day. If you want any further information on what we said or any of the indicators that we've shown here, you can either drop me a line, Anna at AnnaCooling.com or David at QuantumTrading.com. Tomorrow is um, well, it's Halloween today, last day of the month, of course. Tomorrow is uh, non-farm payroll, which is always great fun. And we'll see what, uh, what happens then. And then we are moving into just November and December. My goodness, it's always, it's probably going to get even more um, exciting, as they say. December's always great for trading. Pardon? December's always, December's always great for trading. Always, always been great for trading. So uh, whatever happens, uh, we will be here. We'll be back next week for more the two webinars, London Forex in the morning and this session in the afternoon. So um, we'll uh, catch you at one of those next time. As I said, enjoy the rest of the trading day, the rest of the trading week, and we'll see you next time.